This weekend, we have the Coca-Cola 600 for the NASCAR Cup Series, as well as other races at Charlotte for the top NASCAR Series. And while that should be something that a lot of people are excited for, one announcement has kind of dampened that excitement and that enthusiasm. That being that the PJ1 track bite that helps grip up the racetrack for cup cars is being used for the Coke 600. Yeah, that should be something that in theory we would be excited about. Maybe more grip means better racing in some worlds, but the way that they get it isn't what excites people at all. In the short term, this is being used this weekend, and personally, I'm not happy about it. I don't like when they put the sticky stuff on the track just because it kind of seems like a way to artificially make the racing better, whereas you can't do it strictly off of your product. Many times, this also makes tracks single grooves, but not in a good way, a bad way. A lot of people have this misconception that single groove racing is always bad. Yet, the most popular times for Bristol Motor Speedway have been when the track was single groove. Martinsville is almost certainly always a single groove track and is one of the most beloved tracks on the circuit. So I don't think that single groove racing can always be bad, but in this respect, when it's not on a short track, yeah, it's actually pretty bad. Look at it like this. These tracks are wide enough and usually have produced good enough racing in the past to have two and three wide racing. If you look back in the history of Charlotte Motor Speedway, there are plenty of great battles, side-by-side -side battles, people passing each other. But in the previous years, we haven't seen that. And it's not just Charlotte, places like Texas as well, where the PJ1 pretty much makes the track a one-groove track where you can't pass. And it's too fast to do a bump and run because if you try that, you're either going to damage your own car, wreck yourself, or wreck your competition. So in a lot of ways, while it can improve the racing and make two distinct lines, in a lot of ways, it also can make the racing worse. And on top of that is something that the fans don't like. Now, another reason I'm not crazy about PJ1 being used is it's a band-aid on bad racing. This started at Bristol. They tried to bring back the dominant bottom groove because we the fans have asked for it. And they did. And it worked. I remember that first weekend seeing cars on the track having to move each other out of the way. And I was ecstatic. It works at Bristol. But just because something works at one track doesn't mean it's going to work at all the others. For instance, the bump and run I talked about. That'll work at Bristol. Probably ain't going to work at Daytona. So then this spread to other tracks that had more dull racing to try and give them a distinct line to choose from, from the dominant line already. So if a track had a good bottom line, well, then they could just go up, put track compound on the top, and then you have two lines, hypothetically. But it's finicky. The cars, the weather, the track conditions, everything changes every year. So you can't bank on what happened last year happening again. Really, PJ1 seems to be what NASCAR uses when they can't make the cars or tracks better to improve the racing. And there are natural ways that tracks can make racing better without using PJ1. We've seen it in the past. Before the recent repave in 2012, Pocono Raceway actually did this. They put in what they call a grip strip. Now, they didn't put PJ1 track compound down. They didn't put anything on the track. They simply repaved a section of one of the turns for drivers to choose between the dominant shorter bottom line or this new area of the track that had more grip than the rest of it. And it made for some really awesome racing that saw guys choose the bottom and dive into the corner and others who went up high to the grip strip and got awesome runs out of the corner down the front straightaway. So there are options here. They do cost more money, and I think that is where we see the roadblock. These fixes are ones that can be more long-term. You don't have to put stuff down every day of the weekend. Every weekend you come down. You just repave a strip and go from there. Now again, that worked at Pocono, so it may not work at other tracks. But it's worth a shot. I mean, at Bristol, before PJ1, which seems to be like 
it was more of a last ditch effort. They tried to grind down the top lane to try and make it unraceable so drivers would go to the bottom. Unfortunately for that plan, it made the drivers actually race more at the top, but they tried something different. They put money into it before they went for the track compound. I respect people trying to fix the tracks or trying to fix the cars. What I don't like is when people just put stuff down and call it that. It seems too easy for them to do. And a lot of times it doesn't produce better racing. It just kind of produces meh racing in a different spot of the track. Now, another thing that I think racing fans in general can probably be united on is how it kind of ruins the track overall, especially for other series. So look at Texas, for instance. The track was kind of ruined for the IndyCar product as the track compound makes the facility a one groove track. Based on the studies that IndyCar had, because of the staining of the racetrack that the PJ1 did, it made turns one and two in Texas have 20% less grip in the black stained space. So if NASCAR elects after the fact not to use the PJ1 with the next gen car, it still can have residual effects, maybe for months or if not years. So the effects of these short term changes could affect long term production. This is emblematic of a much larger issue for NASCAR. The quick fix issue. The we're going to do something really quick and it'll completely solve it all. Most changes in life that need to be for a long term effect need to be thought out long term, not as a quick fix. You see it with how NASCAR approaches the numbers issue, moving the numbers back to fix sponsorship. Yeah, that might be something in the short term that helps, but at the same time, it doesn't solve the long-term problem of sponsors continually dropping out of NASCAR. All it does is give the existing ones more room to play with and more money to throw. But what happens when those sponsors start to back out because they're throwing more money at it? What happens when you can't fill that ad space? It's a similar kind of issue where the long-term ramifications aren't thought out, we're only thinking in the box of the modern day. But at least with a long-term solution, there's an end goal in sight. Look at the next-gen car. It seems to be more of a long-term solution and fans are welcoming it with open arms because you're trying to fix a root issue, not just trying to lay something down and call it a day. NASCAR needs to take more time to improve the cars and get the tracks right for better racing. Think outside the box. For instance, Charlotte, even before the PJ1, has become a dull racetrack. The repave worked too well, and the track is still acting like a freshly repaved facility. So, what solution is brought up? Well, Marcus Smith turns his second Charlotte race into the Roval race, whereas the 600 always is going to be prestigious and bring people in. The Roval has been a massive success over the last three years, and is now a staple in both the NASCAR playoffs and just the season overall. What I'm saying is, yeah... I might not agree with every long-term decision that NASCAR makes, but I respect the fact that they're trying to make long-term decisions work and trying to let it play out. They tried letting the PJ1 play out, but it was obviously a quick fix. If there's anything you should take from this video, it's this. Long-term solutions, like possibly the next-gen car, should always trump patchwork fixes. That's what you should take from this. Ask for long-term solutions so we can get some long-term effects. Hopefully good. But that's my take. I could be completely off on this one. I'm just some fan on the internet. I want to hear what you think. Do you think NASCAR should just keep using the PJ1 and see if they can find ways to make the racing better with that? Or do you think that they should try different tracks? Try to fix the current tracks? Try to do something else? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video. Share this video. Subscribe to my channel for more NASCAR content like this. And you know what? If you really, really like it too, you have the option to be a member on the channel. And until next time, have a good one.